So the theme of forgiveness. Uh, forgiveness is uh, it's a two-way street. It's a two-way street, which our, our gospel very uh, cleverly illustrates. And we like to be the recipients of mercy, as in we like when people forgive us. We like it. it it's good. It's helpful. It's useful. It's uh, it's it's a pleasant experience, somewhat, to recognise you've done wrong. You say it to someone, "Look, I'm sorry. I was offline," and they say, "Look, it's okay." I forgive you. you know, it's, it's nice to be forgiven. It does take a bit of humility to recognize in the first place that you were wrong, but it is nice to be forgiven. Uh, our gospel hold, hones in on the fact, though, that if we have been the recipients of mercy, if we've been the beneficiaries of mercy, if we have received mercy, then we too must be merciful. And, and that's, that's, that's more difficult. The issue of forgiveness the issue of me forgiving somebody else it's it's not as straightforward as it seems or it's very easy to say we must forgive everyone and then everyone no one is going to agree no one is going to disagree with that i suppose we should forgive everyone yes 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 but in practice in the the actual lived situations of our lives uh, forgiving people who have hurt us can be exceptionally difficult um uh, I've, I've given these thoughts before, so apologies if, if, if you've heard them before. But I think they are very, very helpful. When it, it comes to forgiveness, there's a couple of things, a couple of misconceptions that we have to get out of the way, and then, in order to get to the, to, in order to get to the heart of forgiveness. Okay, so forgiveness doesn't mean it doesn't mean that what the other person did ultimately wasn't really that bad. Okay, so forgiveness doesn't mean I have to kind of fool myself or convince myself that the other person's actions were, were either okay or neutral, right? Like if you've been, if you've experienced uh, betrayal in marriage or if there's a family situation where maybe due to a will, very, very common in Ireland, due to a will, um, a brother, sister, brother-in-law, sister-in-law aren't talking to us anymore and have spread all sorts of stories about us uh, around the town, village, locality. This kind of thing happens. Okay, I'm not saying, oh, well, at the end of the day, sure, that's, it's not actually that bad. It's okay. Or people who maybe have, have suffered, uh, maybe as children at the hands of others, maybe sexual abuse in the family or whatever it may be, all that kind of thing. We're not, forgiveness doesn't mean that was okay. Okay, so forgiveness doesn't mean I have to try and convince myself that the other person's actions are either okay or, or, or good, okay, or, or neutral. Okay, the other person's actions can be wrong and remain wrong. So the other person's actions, I don't have to try and excuse them. Okay, another thing that forgiveness isn't is to try and convince ourselves, look, that was years ago. So it's, it's back in the past, so let's just forget about it and move on. We, we say that, and even the kind of the um, forgive and forget, it's a stupid expression, because you can forgive, but f forget, you, you can't choose to forget. You can't delete a memory. It doesn't work that way, and especially if it's something very, very painful, you won't forget it. So you can't choose to forget. You can choose to forgive, but you can't choose to forget. It, it doesn't work. So, uh, to say that it happened a long time ago, so look, let's just let bygones be bygones. It happened ages ago. Uh, it doesn't matter anymore. Again, water under the bridge doesn't actually heal wounds of the heart. If you cut your finger, as our dear altar server did there a couple of days ago, uh, reached into his wash bag and his razor was left sitting up, so he reaches down into his wash bag and gets three perfectly parallel slits on his finger as he slides his finger down the razor blades. Uh, and uh, yeah, so uh, if, you just, if, I, if you just actually do nothing, which he didn't do, he continuously picked at it, but if you do nothing, it'll actually heal itself. Time will actually heal it. Time, just let the body do its thing and it'll heal. Just leave it alone, all right? Uh, he loved picking at it, didn't he? Anyway, uh, just leave it alone and time will actually heal it. But wounds of the heart, actually, are completely different. Time doesn't change a single thing. It actually doesn't change anything at all. It doesn't, it, like, time passing doesn't make painful memories of your childhood any less painful. You grow up, you get bigger, you earn a little more money, you have a career, your own family, but those memories are often still as fresh as they were on day one. So time on its own does not heal 
memories of the heart or hurts of the heart, wounds of the heart. That's a different, that's a, there are different kinds of hurt. Um, so th- they don't require just the passage of time. So then, okay, if, they, if there are two things that forgiveness isn't, just the action wasn't that bad in the first place or time has passed so let's just move on and forget about it, that's just trying to convince ourselves of something which isn't true. You're trying to, con- con- trying to convince yourself that things weren't that bad or that it was ages ago so we're fine now. It's just, again, that's just not living in reality. So then what is forgiveness? Based on today's gospel, forgiveness is recognizing that someone has done something wrong to me, someone has harmed me in some way, that it was wrong, so someone has harmed me, someone has done something wrong, and we can be very, very clear about it. So person X, this person, maybe my mom, my dad, my brother, my sister, my husband, wife, did this, 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 and this to me. And maybe like another really difficult part of of forgiveness is maybe they've done this, 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 and this to me, and they continue to do this, this, and this. I mean, sometimes the situation isn't closed. The situation hasn't stopped. If you're married to an alcoholic or something, and the the problems continue, like this is, again, reality, the reality of forgiveness. So they've done all these, these things in the past that hurt, and now and there, are also, there are other things that continue to hurt. So as such, there's a, there's a debt of justice. If I'm innocent here, I haven't done anything wrong. I haven't done anything to deserve this. You know, I tried to be a good wife, and despite that, my husband went off with someone else. Um, I've tried to be as understanding and supportive as possible. Despite that, my wife continues to drink. Um, so you, you're innocent here. But you recognize that there's, there's a debt. It's such, there's like a debt of justice. Right? What, what's happening here is unfair. It's unwarranted. It's, it's, it's not my fault. Why does this keep happening to me? It's not my fault. I'm not doing anything to provoke this. Why does this happen? So it's like a debt of justice. You know, if there was some way of, of kind of balancing up our lives, you know, there'd be some need of, of, of justice for this other person who has hurt me to be brought to justice in order to, to level things out. So there's a, there's a need for justice, if you will. A need for like this debt to be paid. So forgiveness isn't pretending there's no debt, because there is. It's not pretending that nothing happened, because it did. But forgiveness then is saying, I recognize that this debt exists. And through the grace of God, I release that person from their debt. So that way, see, we're living in the truth then. I'm not trying to convince myself of something. I'm just, I'm, I'm just living in the truth. They did this, it hurt. There's a debt of justice. But I, in the name of Jesus, through his grace and through his power, I free them from their debt. And while that's very, very hard to say if, if you've been grievously hurt by someone, it's actually it's, it's much easier to say than let's just pretend nothing happened. Let's just pretend it was, you know, it was years ago, so it should be, it's fine. That's, that's, that you won't be able to convince yourself of that. It's not living in the truth. And only the truth sets us free. So to recognize that, that someone has hurt us, there's a debt of justice, and I release that person from their debt. See, this, this unshackles my heart. So even if I'm the one who's, who's innocent, and this is a very, very interesting and somewhat dangerous thing. If I'm innocent in this situation, right? Someone has hurt me, but because I've been hurt, I start to close off my heart, or I start to become hardened, or I start to become cold, or I start to become angry, or revengeful, or spiteful, or even full of hatred towards this person. Now, their bad action is causing actual sin within me, even though I'm innocent. I'm actually starting to become hardened, and I'm starting to become hateful and spiteful and revengeful. Now, what am I supposed to do with that if I want to get into heaven? I mean, even though, even though I'm innocent, I can't bring that into heaven with me. I cannot bring that unforgiveness, that hatred, that, that desire for revenge. I cannot bring that into heaven with me. I can't. Or heaven won't be heaven. So even though I'm innocent, this, this, this lack of forgiveness can actually pull me down so far that I risk heaven. So it's very, very serious stuff. But because... We're the innocent party. We can say, well, it's, it's, not, it's not my fault. It was them. It was all them. It's their fault. They hurt me. 
and I will never, ever forgive them. And we Irish, we are terrible at that. We, are, we hold on to grudges for so, so long. And even when you hear people say it, like, you know, I'm, uh, you know I, I do my best now for charity and I do my best in the church and I do my best here, there and everywhere, but that person, I will never forgive them. That is the chain around your heart. I don't want to say where it's pulling you towards, but it's not good. And the only way, the only way we break that is through forgiveness, forgiving the other person, even though they haven't asked for it even though they have not asked for forgiveness, or even though what they did actually continues. That's hard. That is really, really hard. But if we don't do that, our hearts are shackled. Our hearts have this chain wrapped around them. And we can do lots of other good things, but it's just like, like an eagle, the, 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 the eagle who can soar to, I don't know what height, uh, just their, their beautiful majestic flight patterns and the whole lot all of that you can fetter them with the smallest of threads you just wrap a little thread around the foot and down and no matter how big he is he just just can't get off the ground if, if we have unforgiveness uh, it stops us it stops us from becoming saints and it may well stop us from getting into heaven so we have been the beneficiaries of mercy every single time we've gone to confession where the Lord has looked straight into your heart and saw all the dirt that was there and saw all the imperfection and the vanity and the everything that we've confessed he saw it all and he says you are forgiven and you're not just forgiven because I say so you're forgiven because I paid your debt I paid your debt that's how you're forgiven. Your forgiveness, your pure soul, cost me something. It cost me my life. So this isn't just kind of magic words that God clicks his fingers and you're forgiven. God forgives you because he paid the debt. So this is the love that we have experienced and we're supposed to become like Christ in order to get into heaven. We're, being Christian doesn't mean we're part of this club or group where people congregate and go to mass together or whatever it is. Being Christian means being taken into his mystical body. We're supposed to be like Jesus. We're supposed to live like Jesus. See these Christians, see how they love. That's why they're called Christians. So in order to be like Christ, I must forgive like Christ. I must forgive like him. And like there's, there's no two ways about it. This is just really, really hard. But if we don't, the consequences are serious. But as I said before, we say through the Lord's grace, I forgive this person for what they've done through the Lord's grace. Because on your own, you will not be able to do this. On your own, you will not. Our, our kind of, if you will, natural virtue uh, takes us so far. It's easy to forgive once, maybe twice, maybe three times. It's getting hard now around the fourth, fifth, sixth time. Then by ten times, you're like, I'm done with you. I'm just done forgiving you. That's ridiculous. If you really love me or really care, stop doing that. And if you don't stop, you clearly don't care or clearly don't love me. Yeah, but what if that person is your husband or wife or a family member who you can't divorce? You can't, your brother remains your brother. Your family remains your family. You can walk away from them. That's where these kind of hurts and this, where this kind of forgiveness is really, really difficult because friends or acquaintances, colleagues, you can walk away from, you know, take care of yourself, have a good life, best of luck. And you never have to see them again. Or you just, they work in their part of the factory and you work in yours and you just give them the, how are you going on? And you don't actually have to engage with them. But family, you're stuck with. Which is really good, isn't it? It's really good. It's really good. But at times it can be challenging. So, our gospel today is not easy. But we have been the beneficiaries of mercy so, so often. The beginning of every Holy Mass during every confession, during our baptism, anointing of the sick, so often we have been forgiven. And to whom much is given, much is expected. So if the Lord has forgiven us, we too must forgive others through his grace, through his power. 
So Lord, we ask you to strengthen us in our great calling to be apostles of mercy, <coughs> to be a witness to mercy in the world. And Lord, in your holy name, to forgive all of those who have hurt us, to release them from de their debt, because ultimately you have paid it. Amen.